Hello everyone, my name is Swingpoint and welcome to Resident Evil Resistance. This is the multiplayer game bundled with Resident Evil 3. And today, instead of doing a build video, we're going to do a bioweapon video. So you see Big Ugly on the screen over here. I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about Gherkin. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and talk about how to use him well. But more importantly, we're going to talk about how to counter Gherkin and Mr. X and Yataveo and the D-Field and Nemi. There's a lot of things that survivors can do to beat these bioweapons up, and I don't see that many survivors doing those things, especially on Yataveo. Yataveo is really easy to deal with, and I don't see a whole lot of people knowing how to deal with Yataveo. So we're going to go through each one of them. I'm going to show you some secrets on how to be effective using them, some things you should know about them, and some things you can do to be effective countering them. Okay, so let's start from the top and work our way down. All right, so let's spawn a little stinky in here and start talking about some things that you may or may not know. We'll start with the basics, the things that most people know, and we'll work our way up. So when he spawns in, he's not enraged. He has four things. He has Wild Swing, Impact Slam, Overkill, and Enrage. Enrage is his state. He's currently not enraged. So that means his Wild Swing looks something like this, and it does 300 damage. And then his Impact Slam looks something like this, and it does 300 damage. Now, he also can become enraged. And when he's enraged, he moves much faster. And his attacks become much more powerful. So this turns into a 600. And it bops people around. And then Impact Slam also turns into 350. So there's just a little bit more damage on the Impact Slam. But there's some things you might want to know about Impact Slam. So let's walk on over here. So we have Gherkin right here. Now let's say there's a terminal over there. And we got to stop it. But man, we're already in Gherkin. We can't get to him in time. But we don't want them to get the terminal. Let's, what do we do? If you're enraged, you got quite a bit of reach with Impact Slam. So make sure you use that reach, and she'll get stunned by it, even if you do it over an obstacle. It's a great way to go ahead and prevent an objective from getting done, as long as you can get close enough, even if there's an object in the way. And for the last skill here, we have Overkill. Something to know about Overkill is that it works even when you're not enraged. It works the same way. So he's going to go... He's going to start grabbing. Something to keep in mind about Overkill is take a look at the bottom left-hand corner. This goes for Pulverize on Mr. X, too. The timer stops while he's in the middle of a grab. So if you can get off a last second grab, that's awesome. Or if you just want to extend the time in which you're using Gherkin, this is a really good way to go ahead and do that. If you're to be using Overkill, if you can, see if you can aim yourself towards a wall or away from where the other survivors are. Because the way that you knock him out of this grab when you're using bullets is by shooting him in his eyeball that shows up on his arm. One other thing to keep in mind with Gherkin here is when you're running Beastmaster. When you run Beastmaster, you spawn dogs. Now immediately one spawns in and it has Berserker on. But something else to keep in mind is that they spawn every 15 seconds, but those are real seconds, not in-game seconds. So you see how the timer's frozen? It's at 50 because we're doing overkill. Well, the dogs, they keep spawning. So this is a really good way to get a lot more dogs out of your Gherkin. And let me tell you, these dogs are so annoying to deal with, especially since they have Berserker. So if you can get some grabs going, absolutely do that. Just make sure you're careful in Area 3, because sometimes what happens is people will take advantage of you if you're in the middle of a grab. So let's say you grab right here. You can't do anything until your grab's done. So sometimes what I see people do is they'll let Gherkin grab for a while. They'll clear a core in Area 3, and then they'll save their teammate. So, your objective is what matters the most. Taking down a survivor is second best. So make sure you protect your objective. Now this room in area two is really, really common for having a terminal right here. Something I like to do specifically with this room, and you can imagine using this in other rooms, is I like to set up the room in a way where they're gonna be in trouble if they try to get the objective completed. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. So let's say they're on their way to barging in and they just got in. Something you can do to really cause problems for them is you suddenly come out here and you go bam and you go bam and you go bam. You put a bunch of creatures here, you lock the door and then you go ahead and spawn Gherkin right here. And now they start scrambling, they wanna escape, but the door is locked so you can go whoop bam. And then let's say they do manage to open the door. What's gonna happen then is you're gonna have creatures on the other side of the door that are right there to bite, hold the survivors in place, and you can just keep beating on them. Use your bioweapon strategically. It's a really, really, really powerful way to utilize them. And I don't see people doing it that often. A lot of times I'll just see them drop a bioweapon and that's it. They'll drop it on an objective, cool, but they won't set it up to make it even more powerful. These are your biggest weapons in the game. Get the most out of them that you can. Now let's start talking about how we can counter some of these bioweapon plays, starting with Gherkin. One of the first things you can do when you're countering a grab from Gherkin is to use a fire mine from Martin. You can go right underneath Gherkin during the middle of one of his grabs, place down a fire mine, and poof, 
he'll drop whoever he's grabbing. This also works on Mr. X, and it also works on Yatavea. Some of the other things you can do to cause Gherkin to drop people when he is grabbing them is using Martin's Flashbang Alt. You can use Tyrone's Kick. You can use throwables such as a Flashbang, a Molotov, or a Grenade. Or you can shoot him out. Before we get to shooting out, do know that you can use throwables and Tyrone's Kick and the Flashbang Alt on Mr. X as well. The only one that will work on Yataveo out of all of those is the Molotov. You can't do a kick on Yataveo, and you can't do a flashbang or a grenade on Yataveo. But now let's talk about how we can cause Gherkin to drop somebody by using a gun instead of using a throwable. If Gherkin's in the middle of grabbing somebody, all you really have to do is get to the front side of him and then shoot his shoulder where the eyeball is. That eyeball is his weak spot. You'll tell if you're hitting it correctly because he'll do a bunch of damage. And usually two or three hits will cause Gherkin to drop whoever he is trying to pulverize. I prefer using the shotgun. I feel like I get the most consistent results out of that when I shoot the eye. One other thing to mention about Gherkin that I don't have footage for is that you can stun lock him if you have acid rounds. They're really useful against liquors, but they're also really useful against Gherkin. You just keep powing that thing into him, and then he's in a lot of trouble because he just sits there and can't move. All right, so now let's talk about Mr. X. Mr. X has come a long way since he was first put into the game. He's changed a ton. So let's talk about what you can do with him now and why he's so much better than he used to be. So one of the things that Mr. X is really good about now that he used to be really terrible about is how quickly he can attack you. Take a look at this. Boom. Here he yeah, is. And now he's attacking. Stun locked yes. and you're already out of the game. I'm running equipment, so that's why he's attacking so strong. But he can get in there and just start pulverizing people in no time at all. Used to be that he was super slow and people could run away. But on that note, let's talk about how people still do tend to get away from Mr. X because people don't play it right, okay? Something I see a lot of people do. Even though Mr. X can attack insanely quickly now, so they'll do this. Here comes Mr. X, and then immediately they spam Stalker. Look at how much time you just gave the survivors to either flashbang you or run away and just make it so you're not a threat. Stalker's great, and it does a bunch of things. It makes Mr. X move super fast. It makes it so you can see where the survivors are, and it makes it so that you're doing 20% more damage, which is awesome. You can really just pulverize these guys. But read the room. If you have an opportunity to jump on people and just start beating the crap out of them right away, make sure you do that. Otherwise, you're just giving them an opportunity to make it so you get less value out of your bioweapon. And that's the last thing you want when you only get to use this thing every once in a while. Now let's talk about other things on Mr. X. He has his Pulverize and his Bull Rush and Rampart. All of those are things we haven't talked about yet. So Pulverize is his skill that he uses to go ahead and grab and go, bah, gotcha. And then he will squeeze your face right off. It doesn't take that long. It's much shorter than Overkill on Gherkin, but you're pretty vulnerable when you do this. It's pretty easy to get shot in the head. His other skill that he has, in terms of attacking, is Bull Rush. And there's a lot of cool things about Bull Rush, and they made Bull Rush way better than it used to be. You can go for a pretty long time with your Bull Rush. It will eventually time out. But it is a good way to kind of just crowd control survivors and just keep beating on them. I don't see people use it like that very often, where you just keep doing circles around the survivors. It's a great way to hold them in place and make it so creatures can do more damage to the survivors. Make it so you're doing more damage to the survivors. And then if you want to eventually hit him, you wind up here and you get a good poof, and it does a ton of damage. But I don't use Bull Rush that much because I find Hook Punch to just be a much more powerful attack. Again, read the room, figure out what your situation is. Bull Rush is really good for catching up to survivors if you need to. One thing you gotta be nervous about though with Bull Rush is that sometimes the survivors will go ahead and close a door on you when they're running away and you can't Bull Rush through a door. At least not if it's closed. You can Bull Rush underneath a door which is something to talk about. In fact, you know what? Let's talk about Mr. X indoors, because that's been a pain point for him for a long time, but they made it so that it's not as big of a deal. So let's take a look. So Mr. X going through doors, he always just kind of like does a thing where he's like, hey man, I'm so tall and I don't want to hit my forehead. I have a sensitive forehead. Please don't hit my forehead. So what would happen is people would just kind of walk around him and play door games with him. We've done this many times on stream. But there's a couple of ways to counter door games now. One of which, like I said, is the bull rush. So you can just bull rush right through and be like, bam! But, again, they can close the door on you, and you're in a lot of trouble. What I like to do nowadays, though, is I'll close the door on them. And they'll be like, what? What's he doing? And then they get a little jonesy with you because they like picking on Mr. X. And what you can do then is you can open the door and punch through the door. 
they made it so Mr. X can punch through doors. I'm not sure people know this. This was an update that they did you know, a couple patches ago. This is a really good way to deal with door games. You just punch through the door. He didn't used to be able to do that. But if you got somebody who's being a little cocky with you, just pick on them like this. They'll get stun locked in your punches and the next thing you know, they're downed and they look like a fool. Now let's talk about his last skill, Rampart. Rampart does a lot for you. Rampart will block flashbangs, make it so that if Martin uses his flashy thing or if somebody throws a flashbang at you, meh, I can't see you. It also makes it so that he doesn't take damage because Mr. X's body takes zero damage. The only thing that takes damage on him is his head. So if you're using Rampart, the back of your head's still exposed, but the front of your face is covered. So again, you're not gonna hit flashbangs or you're not gonna get hit by flashbangs. You're also not gonna take damage to the face. You can get knocked out of Rampart, I believe by a grenade, but also by a shotgun shot to the face. You can get, they'll knock you right out of Rampart. So be careful of that. But one thing I wanna show you guys re here real quick before Mr. X is gone is I want you to listen to the music. Listen to it change. Mine, mine, mine. <laughs> Fuck you. you hear that? That drop? Do, 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 do. That's a dead giveaway that Mr. X is about to be gone. Even if you have extended timers on him, it happens. It happens always around six to seven seconds. So if you hear that, you know that he's about to run out of juice. He might do something that might be a little silly. He might try to get an easy grab in or something like that. But you know that your time with Mr. X is about to be done. So let's talk about a couple of things that are unique to Mr. X here that we have in this clip. First off, what you want to do when a bioweapon spawns is you want to use a Valerie scan if you're nearby. Because not only will it let you do more damage to Mr. X or Gherkin or Yatabe or whoever, it'll also allow you to kind of track where they're moving, being able to see their aura, which is really helpful when you're trying to run away from them. But as for Mr. X, if he manages to grab somebody, if you go ahead and hit him with a headshot, and that can be with a Lightning Hawk, a Raiden, a Shotgun, pretty much anything that's going to do a lot of damage, there's a good chance you're going to cause him to drop whoever he's trying to pulverize. And again, throwables work on Mr. X. If you use a Flashbang, the first flash you do to him is really going to stun him. He's going to... But keep in mind, if you try to do it again too quickly, he's going to become more resilient towards Flashbangs. He's going to kind of mimic the behavior that Gherkin always has because Gherkin's really resilient to flashbangs but if you try to flashbang Mr. X too many times in a row he's like huh, sup and he'll start punching you some other things about Mr. X is that he has rampart and that's how he counters your flashbangs right and bullets going to the face you can knock Mr. X out of that by using a shotgun shot and we probably have a clip of it here you can also do it by using a grenade it causes him to be vulnerable so if you hit him with a shotgun shot and throw a flashbang well then suddenly he's going through all those animations again other things is that if you do manage to down him, he stays down for a long time. It's like 10 or 15 seconds. The last thing you want to do as Mr. X is get defeated because you are punished for it. And actually, one thing I forgot to mention about Rampart, even though the front of your face is protected, the back of your head is not. So they can still hit you in the back. So if you got like a Becca or a Jill coming up behind you with a bio Jiller build, you're still in a very Check dangerous it. spot. That worked. Nope. Okay, let's talk about Yataveo. Before, <laughs> before we get anywhere with Yataveo, what you do need to know is that Alex's voice line of a laugh <laughs> is actually just a sound of her being tickled by Yataveo <laughs> with the little tentacles. Okay, so let's get into Yataveo here. There's a lot of things to talk about in terms of how to use Yataveo. So what I like to do with Yat is I like to set up Yat on a door if possible. Yat's supposed to be a big roadblock. Let's take a look. So one thing I like to do is I'll spawn a Yataveo on the certain side of a door. Now you gotta be careful now, they don't just sit and shoot your Yataveo through the door because Yataveo is super vulnerable. So one thing I like to do is I like to lock the door this route and then have my Yataveo. Easy. That way, they are forced to bust through the door to start attacking Yataveo. And if they do that, well, you know what you're going to do? Eat a little bit of survivor soup and you get your yum-yums going here. So by locking the door, you put yourself in a much more advantageous position. Now, we got a lot of things that we can look at here. One of the things that you can do with Yataveo that's really cool is that you can leave by using Lurking Menace and then place things around survivors. Especially when you're playing Alex and you have a lot of, like, really stinky stuff going on and you make it so you can poison the survivors constantly. Something you can do if you have your proper viral mod on is you can be like, hey! And you're going to start putting these all around the survivors. And they start getting poisoned even though your Yataveo is right here. So it kind of pressures them to want to push into Yataveo. Other things to know about Yat is that Yataveo can auto attack, really. <coughs> so, well, Yataveo died, but you don't have to aim that skill. Here, I'll try to put it in a position where you can see it a little bit easier here. 
But if you use your Yantaveo, let's put him like over here. Oh, actually, you know what? Before we show off those skills, something to know about Yantaveo is that Yant's kind of hard to place, right? Oh God, this I big chunky thing. Why can I never place Yantaveo? If you're playing on PS4, don't be afraid to like touch the up or down button because it'll auto place Yantaveo. Not auto place, but auto recommend a place. And then that can kind of give you like an idea of where you can start in terms of placing Yantaveo. Now, it's not always going to be the best place. I'll just kind of put him in the middle of nowhere there, right? But it at least can put you in a position where you can place Yattaveo if you need to. But now, onto what we were talking about here. Let's put Yat right here. Destroying your whole Do you things you know about Yattaveo? Oh, also, one thing that's nice about Yattaveo is it makes a, a really project. big aura around it that causes survivors to walk really slow. So you got to take advantage of that if you can. But what I was saying about constricting vine is you just tap L1, boop, and it'll auto attack. So don't worry about aiming it. That's the last thing I'd recommend doing. Another thing you can do with the Atavao is use your squish. But it's horribly inaccurate sometimes. But if you do manage to hit it, you'll grab your survivor there. And something I like doing after you do that isn't necessarily always reeling them in. But instead, you can go ahead and use Constricting Vine on them because it auto aims and you can just start doing a ton of damage. Something else to keep in mind with Slime Shot here is if you hit him again, It'll cause their struggle to reset a bit. So you gotta press A, 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 to X, excuse me, X a bunch of times to get out of the slime. You can keep re-sliming them, and it'll make it so they can't get out, which is especially useful when you're using Verdant, that because is Verdant is already good at keeping survivors in place. So don't be afraid to reuse your slime shot. And one last tidbit here with Yataveo is that you see self-destruct and how it's not active right now? Well, the way to make it active is to go ahead and use devour. And if you successfully devour a survivor, that'll make it so that self-destruct unlocks. Also notice that when you're devouring, your timer pauses. Something to know about self-destruct is that it does about this much damage, blam. But if you are using the self-destruct variant on Yataveo, you can blow up immediately, but you also get a damage bonus if you devour somebody. I think it's the second variant on Yataveo. It's called self-destruct or something like that, or explosive. Even though you can blow up immediately, you still get the bonus from eating somebody. So if you can, eat someone first, then self-destruct, and you'll get a ton of bonus damage if you're using explosive on Yataveo. One other thing you can do with Yataveo, but your mileage will vary, is you can place traps under Yataveo. So sometimes what'll happen is you place your yat there and you'll have a bunch of traps underneath it and when your yat to goes away, the survivors will rush right through and they'll run into a bunch of traps. Can't say I recommend doing it though because a lot of times what happens is people will throw grenades at yat and grenades are literally the best counter in the game for traps because it just gives the survivors a ton of time. They'll throw mollies, they'll throw grenades at yat and you don't want to give them all that free time. So even though you can put traps under yat, I'd be very, very cautious if doing so. Another thing to keep in mind with Yataveo is that Yataveo can be preoccupied if they're devouring. Look at this. Eating a jam sandwich here. You can walk right by Yataveo now. Can't touch you. It's not going to hurt you. So if you need to get to an objective and Yat's busy doing that, that's your, that's your window. That's your opportunity. Run around Yataveo during that moment if you need to. Let's say Yat's at the exit. There's like 10 seconds left and he just ate somebody. Sorry, teammate. I couldn't save you anyway. Time to go. Bye. Go ahead and use that window of opportunity to get out of your situation that you're in. So let's talk about Yataveo here and how to counter Yataveo. There's a lot of things you can do to Yataveo that help you counter Yataveo. Things you can do is if Yataveo gets a grab on somebody, you can throw a Molotov at Yataveo and that will cause them to drop whoever they're grabbing. You can also use a flamethrower. You can use Martin's flame mines. Things that won't work though. You can't use Jill's rockets. That's not gonna cause them to drop anything like it would on Mr. X or Gherkin. You can't use frag grenades or flashbangs because that's a plant and it doesn't care. But what you can do, which I wish more people knew, is that if Yataveo is grabbing somebody, Yataveo has all these little red bulbs at the base of the plant. If you shoot those out, get like a shotgun and pow into it a couple of times, Yataveo will drop whoever they are trying to devour. If you shoot out enough of them, Yataveo won't even be able to devour anybody. He'll be stunned for a little bit. So try to take those out. And now out of all the bioweapons, Yataveo is the most vulnerable to damage for a few reasons. One is if you do enough damage to Yataveo, you can actually kill Yataveo. You cannot kill Mr. X, Nami, Gherkin. You can stun them and down them and get plus 15 on the clock, but you're not gonna actually kill them and make them completely disappear like you can with Yataveo. Yataveo is really easy to take out, easy to do damage to, so make sure you get a Valerie scan on Yataveo and then get a Becca. Becca should go hide behind some sort of cover. 
get on her knee with her swift and then use her ult on Yataveo and then in no time at all Yataveo will fall right over if you're Becca it's your job to take out Yataveo I see way too many Beccas get scared it is your job to take out Yat make sure you have a quick draw or an le5 on you or something like that that can have a lot of rapid fire with your ultimate and then fire into that plant and now on to Spencer's D field. The D field is one of the coolest things in the game, in my opinion, in terms of bioweapons, especially the refract. Take a look at refract. Well, bam. It's just so neat, man. I love it. <laughs> now, when should you use the D field? How should you use the D field, et cetera, et cetera? The D field has different variations and they require different strategies. So I'm using refract right now, and that's a really exciting one. When would you use refract? On something like this. Go ahead and just nail them. Be like, bam, bam, bam. They're cornered. They can't escape. They're definitely going to die. Unless Tyrone uses his ult or something, they're definitely going down. There's plenty of ways you can counter this, and we'll talk about those. But hitting them up on objectives is a really good time to do so. Or if they're caught up on zombies, really just any point where they can't move or get away. Something to keep in mind, though, is that if you're using the D field, you have a priority target. And it is this little monster. Valerie. Okay. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay. Let's try this camera. Monster. Your okay. Faster. Your <laughs> breathing quickens. Stars inside you. you want to take out Valerie because the D field is a bioweapon that specializes in causing damage it's it's better than any other bioweapon in the game at causing a lot of damage very quickly so what happens when you cause a lot of damage really quickly you down survivors but as long as valerie's running around it's like it doesn't even matter so if you can you absolutely have to focus on getting valerie things to keep in mind about the d field which i will show you with the other d field the other d field here that i have is the double d field and I've been seeing a lot more people use this lately, and for good reason. So, something that I see is people will load up a room. And they'll be like, rawr, zombie, rawr, zombie, rawr, zombie. Scary zombies everywhere. And then they'll throw a D field down as soon as people start trying to attack. And what happens a lot of the time is these survivors will get bit by these creatures and get animation locked into running into the D field. The double D field lasts longer than the other D fields do. You can see how long it's staying here. Use this as a strategy if you need to. Things to keep in mind with the D field from the survivor side is that you cannot shoot through it and you cannot throw grenades through it. It will all bounce off. A grenade will bounce back at you. A bullet will be eaten alive. Nothing happens. In fact, we used to use this strategy back in the day when Becca could use her rockets on cores across the map. You'd be like, haha, can't touch my bio core now, can you, Becca? It was a good way to block her. But again, something I see a lot of people doing is putting a D field on a horde once the survivors try to attack the horde. And then since you can't shoot through, you can't help your teammates. And if you get bit, you get animation locks and yeah, yourself right into a D field. I'm seeing a lot of really good plays with this double D field, something to consider. One last thing to know about the D field and really just bioweapons in general, something I super struggled with. <laughs> I think so much so that they actually changed it because of me because I was being dumb is when you use the D field take a look You see that circle that circle is where you're allowed to place it So when I initially tried using the double D field, I'm like, well, okay Why can't I place it here? Like sometimes I can place things here like look at that that D fields unimpeded and the other one can just like go into the wall Why can't I use it? It's because of the green circle The green circle needs to be unimpeded as to wherever you're gonna put your D field You can kind of shove the D field wherever frankly as long as that green circle is clear You're pretty much good to go. I'd be like boop as long as the green circle's fine, you're good to go. So just keep in mind where your circle is. Makes it much, much, much easier if you want to go ahead and be able to and lay a D field right on top of a survivor as they are trying to do a objective or something, like the terminals. Knowing that the circle is where you can place it makes you move way faster. Now, in terms of countering the D field, the main thing you need to do is kind of read the room. If you can feel like a D field's about to happen, like you're on an objective or it's just been a little while, start thinking about how you can deal with that the ways you can deal with that is you can scatter especially if you're valerie the best thing you can do to counter spencer's d field is be valerie and then not be right next to your team 
run off like you ain't got a dang clue what's going on because then he's got a choice he's either gonna solo valerie or he's gonna try to take out the other people and then valerie can come pick him up anyway so valerie should keep her distance other things you can do though is let's say you're on a bio core trying to attack it if you can if you just got a feeling the d field's coming use your tyrone alt before the d field shows up because then if he hits you with it you can get enough time to walk away from the d field or same thing with valerie use your alt preemptively too you're like oh god we're on this thing and i kind of feel like it's coming if you place your alt on the ground right next to the where the d field's gonna be you'll get yourself picked up immediately upon getting hit by the d field and then by that time the d field's usually gone and you're back up and ready to go and now on to nemi the secret about nemi is that he kind of sucks he has four skills here. He has Jab Cross, which is like Mr. X's hook punch, except it's a little bit wider. It's really good at stun locking people. You can pivot when you use this. So I recommend doing that. You see, I can keep changing directions. Make sure you pivot when you're using Jab Cross. And same thing as Mr. X, they made it so that you can Jab Cross through doors. Nemi isn't quite as terrible as Mr. X when it comes to dealing with doors. And actually, speaking of doors, you can use Accelerate. Accelerate's his big scream. Makes it so the survivors are stunned for a bit. It causes Nemi to start running, and he can just cruise right through doors, which is really cool. One of his other skills is he has Tentacle Sight. Boom! Use them noodles. That's really good if you know a survivor's got a little bit of a distance on you, or they're trying to do an objective and you can't reach them in time. Use your Tentacle Sight to go ahead and make them move around a little bit. It's really easy to dodge, but it's more so to keep them from getting something done that you don't want them to do. Now let's talk about Nemi's cadence here. So... When you spawn Nemi in, you got a couple of choices, and I recommend you think about them. So, something I see a lot of people do is they'll try to scream immediately after getting Nemi out so they can stun the survivors. <sighs> if you're running Extermination, you might want to think twice, because survivors know that most Nemis will scream immediately. So maybe what you want to do is try to get your rockets out immediately. That way, if they throw a flashbang at you, you're going to be invincible like this. Here comes Nemi, and then I'm just beating the crap out of this, and well, boom, I'm not even stunned. And then you can just get that off right away. A lot of times, I'll see survivors kind of be like, huh? Huh? Nemi? Okay, let's see if we can stun him real quick. I know he's gonna try to scream, but let's see if we can stun him. If you get your exterminate out immediately, you're invincible if you're running the invincibility variant of exterminate. And then you can just go ahead and take down a couple of survivors right away. And then, let me tell you, too many survivors get a little too antsy trying to save their friends. And Nemi's really good at securing the kill. So, something to consider when you play Nemi. A lot of times people will spawn him in and then scream right away. If it makes sense, do it. But I would definitely recommend considering this right here. Things to know about Exterminate is that it has splash damage. And if you hit somebody directly, it'll be red. And if you're running the Extermination variant... That causes him to be invincible, you get 50% more damage. So instead of doing a base of 1200 damage, you'll do 1800 damage. And I don't know, this is pretty good at taking survivors out, especially if they're not all the way at full health. Exterminate is the strongest thing about Nemi, and it saves Nikolai a lot of games. There's a few ways that you can counter Nemesis. He's the most difficult to counter when he has Extermination on, but if he doesn't have Extermination on, we have a few things we can talk about. So Nemi's weak spot is his chest. He has that chest canister. That's where you're going to do the most damage to him. You can hit headshots. We can also hit his chest canister. And usually if you get a good shotgun shot into his chest canister, he'll be like, Ugh, uh. so it's a really easy, <laughs> it's a really easy way to knock him out of his extermination if he's not invincible. If Nemi starts spawning in and you hear him and you're right next to him and you have a Martin, I would encourage you to go ahead and be like, nerd power before he gets a chance to scream or to go into his extermination you can stun him very quickly and then make it so your team has plenty of room to run if you're not in a position to stun him immediately run get out of there <laughs> nemi has a really powerful splash damage attack so one thing you can do as survivors is get away run in different directions if he downs now one of you okay not that big a deal if he downs four of you well it's two minutes off the clock if you're in a position where you cannot get away from nemesis what you can do is you can go give him a hug that's one of the best Best ways to counter his extermination is by getting way too close to him because if you're too close to him then suddenly he's not going to be able to hit you with a direct hit you need to be at a certain angle to get hit by a direct hit you can't do that if you're directly underneath him especially if you don't have any walls nearby and it's all open space giving nemi a hug is a really really powerful strategy one other good thing you can do against nemesis is you can stun lock him if you're playing jail and you have rockets 
you can time out your rockets on Nemesis in a way where you can probably knock off about 15 seconds off a of Nemesis and he can't do anything to you. Now, before we close the video out, a couple more things that come to mind in terms of countering pretty much all the bioweapons. Something I like to do with Jan is I kind of like to force bioweapons out of masterminds. Now, you can't specifically force them out, but you can put the mastermind in a situation where it makes sense for them to use the bioweapon and then you can kind of feel it coming. Like, let's say you're in area two, they haven't used a bioweapon yet. If you're Jan and you use your EMP and you cause a bunch of interference with the skill cost cards or you make it so that they can't rotate their cameras or your EIS goes away, etc, etc. Well, then suddenly the mastermind's like, well, what am I going to do? Well, I have this bioweapon here, may as well use it, boof. And then you can kind of predict when the bioweapon's going to be there. Or if you're just taking out a lot of cameras or you're about to shoot out a camera, that'll also force out a bioweapon a lot of the time. I've seen it happen more times than I can count. If you guys watch me stream on Twitch, I'd say nine out of 10 times I can call when a bioweapon's gonna show up and it's because of stuff like that. And one more thing that comes to my mind when I'm thinking of bioweapons has to do with yellow herbs. Now a bioweapon, when you spawn it in, with the exception of the D field, lasts for one minute. Gherkin, Mr. X, Nemi, Yataveo, they're all on the playing field for one minute. You know what else lasts a minute? <laughs> yellow herbs. So if the mastermind spawns their bioweapon and you eat a yellow herb at the same time, you can get a pretty good idea of how long that bioweapon is going to be on the field because you'll be able to see in the bottom left hand corner how much more you got left on your yellow herb. The only thing that messes this up is if Mr. X gets a grab or if Gherkin gets a grab or if Yataveo gets a grab. If nobody's grabbing anybody. It's perfect. And it's always perfect on Nemesis because Nemesis can't grab anybody. So if you kind of want to get a feel for how far you got to run and how long you got to dodge the bioweapon, a yellow herb is a really, really good way to kind of get an idea. And not only is it a good way to get an idea in terms of timing, you're also taking 30% less damage when you're using a yellow herb. And it's, there's very few things in the game that do more damage than bioweapons. So I would recommend using a yellow herb just in general to reduce damage so you're less likely to get down. And actually one more thing <laughs> in terms of bioweapons and them downing people, I just thought of this. Sometimes survivors, please, Sometimes, if your teammate goes down, you just gotta let him die, man. If you see your teammate go down, or heck, even two teammates go down, but going in to save them is not a good idea because there's too many creatures or the bioweapon's still hanging about, you just gotta let it go, man. Just lose the minute, lose the 30 seconds, it's okay. If you run in there and then you're down and then another person runs in there and then they're down and then then not only are you all getting down and you're losing tons of time you're also staggered so you're not working together anymore sometimes you just gotta let it go man if somebody gets down it's a bioweapon it's okay it's only 30 seconds cut your losses man just, just please cut your losses so this is the bioweapon video i realized that there was a lot more content to this whole bioweapon topic than i initially had thought of so thank you guys for sticking around and making it to this point. We stream every single night on twitch.tv slash swingpoint. I'd love to see you guys there. Link is in the description. If you don't have a Twitch account, that's fine. You don't need one. We stream every single night around, mm, but lately it's been 7 p.m. Eastern. So we've been going a little bit earlier for the folks over in Europe, which is super cool. We love having you guys there. It's a great time every single night. But again, thank you guys so much for being a part of this video. If you have any other suggestions on what you want me to cover, I really do think it'd be fun if I went ahead and looked at viewer games and kind of gave my feedback. I think those could be fun videos. Or if there's just like anything else you want me to cover in general about resident evil resistance here i'd love to do so so thank you so much i look forward to your suggestions and then i'll see you guys in the next video that we do around here